Hey up everyone and welcome to the channel for any new viewers. This is a subject I've been thinking of looking at for a while now. I had originally thought I could do multiple examples in the same video but it got too long and complicated so I've decided to do a series that will be ongoing. I will look at newer and older versions of the same or similar bikes to look at the advantages and disadvantages of each. I will also look at any questions that raises, so get ready with your comments and observations. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for a weekly dose of news and views from the ever-changing world of motorbikes. Right, I'm doing this one first because A, I own a second gen Rotax powered 650 Pegaso and I think it's the best of the bikes Aprilia made from the early Touareg 600 to the last Pegaso making it the best bike to compare to the new Touareg 660 and B I actually think the Touareg 660 is one of the better examples of the modern concept of adventure motorcycles so as you can see before I start I think both the Pegaso and Touareg 660 are great bikes and this isn't a serious review of either I want to compare real world performance and rider experience more than anything they are different bikes but are comparable in many ways if you consider the end goal is maximum smiles per mile these bikes are both winners first I want to define which Pegaso I'm talking about because they were made for 15 years with some major changes the Series 1 Pegaso from 90 to 93 used the same air-cooled 600cc Rotax engine they had used in the early Touareg 600. It's well proven and a great tractor, but it wouldn't win any performance battles. Later generations from 05, 06 onwards would be powered by the Yamaha Minerali 660 single engine used in the Yamaha Tenere 660 and many others. However, from 94 to 2005, Aprilia used a water-cooled Rotax 650 engine. This is the motorcycle I'm talking about. The engine is closely related to the BMW 650 engine used in the early F650 singles, but the big difference was that Aprilia designed an all-new 5-valve head. The engine loves to be revved, and although it's great at being a big single thumper, it's much better on the road than most singles. I wouldn't go as far as to say it revved like a twin, but it did rev out really well. Max power is 50 horsepower at 7000 rpm and max torque 59 newton meters at 6500 rpm. And there is a smooth steady surge of power from under 3000 rpm. At low revs the juddering and vibration common with many big singles is remarkably absent. The engine is smooth and usable and the slick gearbox gives a great spread so that first is low enough for slow speed technical challenges and top is long which makes highway miles easy. It will easily reach and hold 100 mile an hour in comfort which is again rare for a big single. With most big singles you might get to 100 mile an hour but by the time you do you certainly don't want to sit at that speed for very long. Standing quarter mile time is around 13.5 seconds but it reaches around 95 mile an hour at that point so has more than enough for any overtakes even strapped down with luggage. Suspension is fairly basic by today's standards but it's all really good quality. The front is preloaded just about only but has over 8 inches of travel and the rear which has a remote preload adjuster also has rebound damping adjustment for when you need it. The single 300mm disc up front provides more than enough stopping power even at speed and both front and rear brakes are really progressive with the strength of them missing on bikes with what might appear to be better brakes. The Pegaso will quite happily pull stoppies if that's what you want. It is also quite fond of lifting the front wheel. The Pegaso weighs in at just 157 kilos dry so even with a full 22 litre fuel tank you are looking at about 180 kilos and the fuel tank is hung low with the extra gallons sitting at engine level so it doesn't feel top heavy at all it's a physically small bike though and although the seat's comfortable for two it gets a bit cramped 
the bike is just not so happy with the pillion as it is solo. There were a couple of known problems, but on most bikes these will have been sorted long ago. The water pump oil seal can go, but it's an easy job. Early auto decompressor springs weren't great, but the parts fixed, and the carbs can be a challenge, especially to get out. There is a small o-ring in the carbs that gets missed and can cause leaks, but once it's done, you are set for a lot of riding. Don't expect to be able to find every part on the shelf of a local dealer. All consumables are easy, but some parts can be more challenging. However, a strong community and plenty of Aprilia parts specialists mean most things are still available somewhere, even if that means a wait for postage. Let's face it, even with new bikes, the days of dealerships keeping a comprehensive stock of parts is long gone. I have had to wait longer for many new parts than I have to wait for parts being posted from abroad somewhere. Rotax and Aprilia do have a tendency to use fairly standard bearing and seal sizes too, so many such parts can be sourced direct from a bearing, bush or seal supplier once you know the sizes. Just to note at this point, there is a great video about some of the other adventure motorcycles people tend to forget about if you're interested. Just click on the link above. Comparing these basic specs from the Pegaso to the Touareg 660, you can see straight away that the new multi-cylinder bike will definitely have some advantages. The new Aprilia 660 Twin has so far proved pretty reliable in the different platforms it's used in, and Aprilia parts availability has improved steadily over the years. Just don't expect a fully stocked dealership in every town. The power on the twin cylinder engine is significantly better with around 80 horsepower at 9,200 RPM and over 70 newton meters of torque at 6,500 RPM, giving it a top speed between 115 and 120 miles an hour. The engine's obviously smoother too, but at legal speeds, there is not so much difference as you might think. Although the Touareg will rev up to 9,000 RPM, it's fast as a short shift around the 7,500 RPM mark to take advantage of the torque. It takes a lot longer to get from 8,000 to 9,000 RPM than it does to get from 6,000 to 7,000. I have struggled to find an accurate quarter mile time on the Touareg, but the more powerful Tuono does a quarter mile in just over 11 seconds. So again, the difference is less than you might think. However, the terminal speed is closer to 120 miles an hour, so translated into the real world, the Pegaso will pull you away from the lights better and faster, for the first 800 yards or so. Then the Touareg 660 will come flying past and keep going away once you are beyond legal speed limits. What all this extra power means is that even with a pillion and luggage, you have performance to spare. There's also more space, increasing comfort for both rider and passenger. The downside is that it's physically bigger and a heavier motorcycle. The actual weight of the Touareg oddly seems very debated. I've seen so many different numbers on spec sheets it gets silly. Aprilia lists a curb weight only, which can mean anything, but is likely to be with minimum fuel. So with a full 18 litre tank, it's likely to weigh over the 210 kilo mark. And that is, I would say, fairly accurate. That is a full 30 kilos heavier than the Pegaso, which is a lot. The weight isn't carried as high as, say, the Tenere 700, but it is carried higher than the Pegaso. Once you're moving, that weight isn't an issue, but the fuel is carried fairly high. So if you do drop it off-road with a full tank, it isn't the easiest bike to lift in difficult situations. Having said that, I would rather lift a Touareg 660 than a GS or an Africa Twin. But I'm not doing that comparison here. I'm comparing it to its older brother. It's just significantly bigger and heavier than the Pegaso. In tight technical terrain, that extra weight makes everything more difficult. Suspension is technically lots better on the Touareg. It gets more adjustment and almost nine and a half inches of travel front and back. And the Touareg does also come loaded with a big bag of electronic wizardry to help you negotiate the challenges of the world if that's what you want. 
it gets fully switchable ABS, traction control, ride by wire, four rider modes of which two are rider programmable, cruise control, engine brake adjustments and probably more. It can be fitted with a quick shifter but that doesn't come as standard. To put all that into perspective, Aprilia have been working on electronic ride raids longer than most and even if it isn't what I particularly want, it all works very well. It's all much easier to negotiate than many I could mention like the Triumph Tiger. Some will love the endless menus, others less so. The good news is that for most of us, you won't need to use them very much. Set it and forget it, as they say. There is one major difference I would like to highlight here, and that is the chassis. The Pegaso had a beautifully designed composite chassis with steel tubing and cast aluminium side plates. It's well balanced and a great compromise between lightweight and rigidity. The Tuareg, on the other hand, has a completely tubular steel chassis. Yes, it has to handle more power, so it would need designing differently. But I can't help but feel that cost came into that particular decision. So, what are they like to ride in the real world, I hear you say? That's very interesting, and although totally subjective, I do have a personal take and a second opinion on this. I was and am still quite tempted by the new Tuareg, but I do have reservations. A friend was more impulsive. He bought a Tuareg and we bumped into each other unexpectedly fairly soon after, when he was still glowing about his new bike. After following him for a while, we swapped for a short ride and then sat and chatted about our thoughts. One thing was very clear, the Tuareg is a much faster bike to ride and the size difference is almost comical. It reminded me of the day I sat with another friend looking at his KTM 1290 at the side of my Kajiva Navigator. Both the Kajiva and the Pegaso look tiny at the side of their more modern counterparts. Surprisingly enough, when I actually compared the spec sheets, the wheelbase of the Tuareg is only one inch or 25 millimeters shorter, but it does feel significantly shorter. And I would guess with the weight and the chassis balance, the Pegaso just feels more nimble. Anyway, our conclusions as usual were many, but we agreed on some fairly basic facts. If you were doing a lot of high speed road miles or carrying a passenger and luggage, we would both choose the Tuareg hands down with no arguments. The extra power and space make the Tuareg a much better tool for the job. For touring in general, the Tuareg is also just a better bike. Off-road, it was much more debated. Despite its smaller size, the Pegaso has better ground clearance and its lighter weight made a big difference. To be clear, we were both riding solo. The 21 inch front wheel on the Tuareg did make it roll over level changes much easier. With the Pegaso having a 19 inch front wheel, we both had to use the throttle much more to make the front lighter when we were going over rocks and bigger bumps. The Pegaso is a better balanced bike though, and the smaller size and lower weight made it easier to manoeuvre in tricky situations. You simply had to use a lot more muscle with the Tuareg, which got tiresome for me. The Tuareg is more like having a 650 v strom with better off-road ability, whereas the Pegaso felt more like a comfortable dirt bike with supermoto wheels. On the back roads it got even more interesting. We did a bit of spirited riding and I made the mistake of letting him pull off first. After that, catching the Tuareg was a challenge to say the least. When I did, there was no way I was passing him, but the Tuareg struggled to get away from the old Pegaso. We swapped again and as soon as I turned the Tuareg on he'd gone. By the time the ECU had set and the fuel pump had run up to pressure, he was well away. It didn't take me long to catch him, but by that time he was hooning around with his chest on the tank and head down. With tight roads again, I couldn't pass him. When we got off, he was grinning from ear to ear saying, well, I needed to get a start on you. Then, it's pretty nippy that old thing, ain't it? Now again, let me be clear, this was never a serious test, 
just two blokes talking about bikes, or chewing the cud as we say where I'm from. If we take the design criteria as to create a bike with good off-road ability, excellent road manners and exciting performance, then I would say both of these bikes fulfil those criteria with ease. They just do it in completely different ways. The Touareg, you can tell, is a middleweight sports touring bike that has been built to make it as off-road capable as possible. Whereas the Pegaso feels like a dirt bike that's been built to be more friendly on the roads. The Pegaso is much more like a big, comfortable supermoto. Both bikes are more than capable of keeping up with most bikes through the twisties. The Pegaso comes out of the corners better, but the Touareg soon takes over. You can brake later and harder on the Pegaso too, so cornering becomes effortless when compared to stopping and turning the weight of the Touareg. The smaller front wheel and shorter wheelbase of the Pegaso make for sharper, more precise steering on tarmac too. If anything, it's the Pegaso that is just a little bit more of a hooligan than the Touareg. So, what are my thoughts after this? Well, it's rare that I look at or ride a bike without seeing something that I want to change, and this is no different really. I actually think both bikes are sort of better at what the other one is trying to do. With a 21 inch front wheel, the Pegaso would be unstoppable off-road, and with a 19 inch front wheel, the Touareg would be a better adventure tourer in some ways. Having said that, both of these bikes are great, and will do most things that you can ask of them. They will both sit with luggage on the highway all day, they will both handle most situations off-road, they both love twisty back roads and single tracks, and they are both reliable. The major difference is that I would say, if you intend carrying a passenger, and especially a passenger in luggage, the Touareg 660 will do it better. If, however, you ride solo and do a lot of short stop riding, then the Pegaso may well be the better option. If you do consider the Pegaso, it's better to do some research but the forums are full of helpful folks. Think about extra maintenance and the cost. Then consider that a reasonably good Pegaso can be found in the UK for around 1,500 to 2,000 pounds, and a Touareg is around 10,000 pounds new. That means you could buy a second parts bike for the Pegaso and still be left with over 6,000 pounds for any unexpected problems you would have and still have a cheaper bike. Then, consider that in another five years, the Pegaso will probably be worth around twice as much, i.e. £3,000 to £4,000, and the Touareg probably worth in the region of £6,000. Look at the sums then, and things look different. Finally, what questions does this raise? Well, I for one, question why Aprilia didn't build a modern version of the Pegaso. A 21 inch front wheel and modern suspension with a modernised 650 single built from half of the 1200cc Dursaduro engine sounds very inviting to me. It would have filled a missing niche in the market too. Should they offer a Touareg with a 19 inch front wheel? With the power map of the Tuono 660? A sort of Touareg GT? What are your thoughts? Leave a comment below and let me know. I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's made you think about the best way to spend your money in the bike world. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to share the video with anyone you think might be interested too if you could. Subscribing will mean you get to find out first when our regular updates, news, views and other videos go out each week. You can find the best biker t-shirts and other merchandise on our website or the Redbubble shop too. They're both linked in the description below. There are more exciting motorcycle adventures and other stories from the shed and beyond on the website. So why not grab a cuppa and take a look around? You won't be disappointed. Thanks for watching. I hope you get some great riding in. Ride free everyone.